With all the advancements in bone regeneration and bone graft materials, autogenous bone is still the undisputed champion. Yes, it is absolutely the gold standard in bone augmentation therapy. And that's because it offers us all three properties desired in bone augmentation techniques. Osteogenesis, osteoinduction, and osteoconduction. Now, autogenous bone can be harvested in two different forms. First, as a corticocancellous block, and the second, as a particulate form. The block graft is, of course, a great option for certain type of defects, but it does require a great skill set in order to harvest and place. The particulate form, however, can be used in many GBR techniques, as well as Khoury bone augmentation approach. So if you're doing any kind of bone grafting, it's important to know the type of instruments and techniques for harvesting autogenous particulate bone easily and effectively. So today, I'm gonna to talk about one of such instruments, the bone harvest scrapers. I will show you the two most common types of bone scrapers and how we use them to get the bone that we need. So let's get started and see what's on our tray. There are primarily two ways to harvest particulate autogenous bone, either with bone scrapers or with special bone harvesting rotary drills. Today, I'm gonna to focus on bone scrapers, which I prefer for a couple of reasons. First, because of its handleability, they can be used on different sites, including the ramus, the lateral mandible, the chin, and the maxilla. They offer great control and a tactile sense and don't require an extensive setup as you would need for the rotary drills. And lastly, it provides a both fine as well as a coarse particulate bone size. Now the rotary drills are also a great option, but they must be used cautiously and slowly with lots of irrigation in order to avoid heat-induced injury to the osteoblasts. They also create a finer bone particular size, which may not be the consistency that I'm looking for for a given case. Now we'll review the rotary drills and how they work in another episode. Bone scrapers come either as a disposable or a reusable instrument with a replaceable blades. They both have three main components, the handle, the working blade, and the collection chamber. Now the angle of the handle is certainly important as depending on the donor side, it can make the access and the harvesting much easier. The blade component is used to scrape the bone so its size and sharpness can impact the quality and the quality of the harvest of bone, as well as the ease in which it's obtained. And the chamber is where the scrape bone is collected. Now, since in most cases we use crestal and lateral aspect of the ramus as our donor site, I try to look for an instrument design that can give me the best access and the most efficient bone harvesting in those areas. Let's first take a look at the disposable scrapers. This instrument is the bone scraper from JK Dental Group. It's a plastic instrument with an ergonomic handle, a metal blade which is held with a small screw, and a transparent collection chamber for the harvested bone. These instruments are for single use only, but the blade itself can be rotated, so when it starts to feel dull, you can simply loosen the holding screw with a hex driver and then rotate the blade 90 degrees to a, to a fresh side and then put it back into action. So it can be used four times on the same patient. This is actually a great feature as the ramus bone is quite hard and cortical in nature. So the blade can begin to feel dull after two to three scape cycles with, with a field chamber. The chamber itself is transparent, so you can easily see the amount of bone that you have harvested. In order to remove the bone from the chamber, you simply slide the handle with your thumb on the chamber, remove the bone, and then slide it back. Now, because this is a plastic instrument, the handle may bend slightly under load. So during the scraping, 
you might lose some of the exerted load and hence the blade may not engage as deeply or aggressively as you may want. Now that's not necessarily a problem, it's just that it takes more strokes and perhaps more time to get the bone that you need and you might feel that it's a bit slow. But aside from that, I think it's a great solution and a great cost-effective way for obtaining small amounts of bone for socket grafts or smaller defects. Now for larger defects, you might need to use a second or a third scraper, but remember that again, you have four sides of the blade to use, so it can be quite sufficient even on a single case. Now I will show you the reusable bone scraper with the replaceable blades, which I use most of the time. These are the Ebner 501 and 502 bone scrapers from Salvin. These two instruments are only different in the shape and the thickness of the handles. Otherwise, the working end is exactly the same. The Ebner 501 has a smaller round handle and the Ebner 502 has a larger square handle, and they're both 30 degree angled instruments. Now I use both of these instruments, but I find that the Ebner 502 with a larger square handle is just more stable in my hands and allows me to apply more load during the scraping process, and it just gives me better control. And that's because the square shaped handle keeps it from rotating in my hands as it can easily happen with the round handle in the other type. These instruments come in three types of handle designs. A straight, a 30 degree up, or a 30 degree down. The blade itself comes in one size, which fits all of these handles equally. It has a working side, which scrapes the bone, and has a spring mechanism that snaps into the handle for its retention. Now, depending on how hard the bone is, the blade generally remains quite sharp for about three to five scrape cycles. In order to attach the blade to the handle, first place the flat end on the chamber itself, right in the slot, and then with your thumb, push it back until the spring-loaded hole reaches the pin and it snaps tightly in place. And to remove the blade, I use a hemostat with one end on the pin and the other on the blade itself and then close the hemostat as it slides the blade out, um, uh, out of its retention hole uh, to the slot. And then I use the hemostat to grab the tip of the blade and then lift it out. I then empty the chamber and then reattach the blade for the next cycle. The chamber itself holds about a half to cc of bone and it can be easily visualized through the body of the blade when it's full. You simply remove the blade and empty the collected bone into a bone dish in either saline or PRF, which I prefer. Now one of the advantages of the Ebner system is that because of its metal composition, I can place a lot of load on the blade during the scraping as it does not bend like the plastic disposable kind. So it allows a more efficient and an aggressive bone harvest per scrape. Also with the heavy load, you can get bone chips, while with a lighter touch, you can obtain a more finer particulate size. So you can basically adjust the quality and the particulate size depending on how much load you place on the, on the blade. The larger particulate size may make it easier to pack into certain surgical sites. I also like the fact that it is a reusable instrument with less plastic waste and yes, more environmentally friendly. Now how you hold the handle and the amount of load that you exert is important in how well and how fast you can harvest the bone. If the bone is quite soft, then you might want to hold this instrument with your palm down and the index finger on the top in order to exert a moderate amount of load. But for a harder bone, it helps to hold the instrument with your palm up as if you're holding a spear and use your forearm and arm to place a larger amount of load on the blade. 
A great donor site for harvest in bone is the lateral aspect of the ramus to the second molar area right along the continuation of the external oblique ridge. So for this, I place the scraper against the lateral wall of the mandible and harvest the bone doing an upward motion. For this, you'll need to hold the scraper with your palm up and then apply a fair amount of load. Now you can find the links to these instruments in the video description below. And if you want to see more on incision design, flap techniques, bone harvesting in Ramus and also other donor sites using uh, such uh, bone scrapers, make sure to check out our videos posted on our website, facialartdentalforum.com. If you like this episode of What's on Our Tray, hit that subscribe button below and stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you for joining us and make sure to check out our other episodes on What's on Our Tray. Thank you.